Let's start. Um, hello and welcome everyone to our webinar today, introducing multi-user uh, cluster MLA in Kubernetes Kubernetes platform. My name is Caroline, and it's great to see that so many of you are joining today to learn more about this new feature that we recently introduced in our KKP 2.18 release. And uh, yeah, we thought after two months, it's time for a little deep dive into MLA. Our speaker for today's webinar is Vichay, who works as a Kubernetes consultant at Kubernetes and who will be explaining to you how to set up such a user cluster MLA stack, how to modify it, and of course, we also will cover the most exciting part, um, seeing the whole process in action. All right. So hello and welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining in. Uh, so I am also as, as much excited as you are uh, to explain the new feature that we have added in KKP platform. Uh, so quickly about me, um, I am a Kubernetes consultant at Kubernetes. I joined Kubernetes about six, eight months ago. And uh, prior to that, I also have experience in managing enterprise Kubernetes deployments. And now I'm responsible uh, to manage the enterprise KKP deployments for different customers for Kubernetes and I work in the professional services arm of Kubernetes right now. I am interested in the GitOps tooling uh, and also improving the customer experience and developer experience for Kubernetes. So, and yeah, at the bottom corner, you can find my coordinates, how you can reach me via email or via Twitter or GitHub. So those are uh, my coordinates. So with that, uh, let's get rolling. Uh, for some reason, this uh, window is in here. Uh, so why use a cluster MLA? Let's let's first understand that. And some of you will already have uh, first-hand experience with KKP. Some of you may not have. So I just put some bullets about what KKP already is good at. Uh, so KKP or Kuber Kubernetes, Kubernetes, Kubernetes platform is already great at having a multi-cloud support. Uh, it also allows you to have authentication authorization via variety of strategies. So enterprise authentication authorization support is great. Uh, it is proven to do uh, management of thousands of Kubernetes user clusters without uh, you know, getting uh, unstable or anything like that. So very stable and solid platform. Uh, it, it is also having many other features uh, specifically directed toward user clusters as part of the management. So for example, doing a Kubernetes upgrade of the user clusters uh, without having any downtimes, or if you want to add on some extra features uh, to the user clusters, you can also use, uh, you know, you have a feature like available add-ons or enforced add-ons. So all these features are there already in KKP, but what KKP so far did not have was a MLA stack uh, out of the box for user clusters. Now, yes, just like how we can have the add-ons, uh, you can always uh, have a MLA as an add-on and you can deploy it in each and every user cluster via add-ons, right? Then then what, what's so great now that we are doing it now? But if we do it that way, the MLA cluster, MLA stack is pretty heavy. And if we have say 30 clusters, then having 30 uh, replicas of MLA stack in each of every cl cluster is going to be resource intensive. And that's why, we decided to not do user cluster MLA. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, MLA stands for monitoring, logging, and alerting, which is basically the stack by which you can observe the health of your clusters, right? So you can install that MLA stack or monitoring, logging, alerting stack in each and every user cluster via add-on, but then you are wasting your resources. That's why we decided that we will do uh, a centralized user cluster MLA as a feature of KKP. And that way we can manage uh, some parts of it centrally and have the rest of the parts uh, in each and every cluster, of course, because you need to have a way to capture the metrics and pass them along, right? So that's, that's why we decided that user cluster MLA is not a uh, add-on that can simply be added to user clusters, but rather a feature uh, that, that must be uh, created inside the KKP itself. So with that, um, so what are the features that this uh, newly created user cluster MLA stack is providing, right? So it obviously as the na name states, it is giving you monitoring, logging and alerting stack. Monitoring is provided via Grafana. 
logging is essentially provided by Promptel, which is capturing all the logs. And then Loki is the storage for the logs and alerting stack, which is essentially alert manager uh, for each and every user cluster, right? So we, we go for multi-tenant architecture. So what essentially we have, we, we as part of the user cluster MLA installation, we install a single centralized data store, uh, which then is shared by multiple user clusters to store their data. So that this is, this is the way we uh, don't need to have a, uh, that the data management component in each and every user cluster because we are taking care of it in a central location. But even though it is centrally located, it is secure by design. Uh, the data for a given user cluster will only be accessible by the authorized users of that cluster only and not by any other um, users. So you, if you have, say, a, <coughs> I mean, KKP is an enterprise focused uh, platform. So uh, usually enterprise uh, administrators use KKP to create user clusters for multiple teams. And so it is absolutely mandatory that, you know, the data for one, te one team's data is not accessible by any chance to the other uh, teams. So, so secure by design, the, the, this feature comes out of the box with no configuration and no scope for changing the configuration as well. Um, it is customizable. So once we have user cluster, user MLA installed, user cluster MLA, the user clusters administrators are free to customize the uh, installed uh, stack so that they can add new dashboards or customize existing dashboards, et cetera. And user cluster administrators can also turn on or turn off this MLA feature completely. So if, they, if, if the user cluster administrators have already taken care of MLA on their side and they don't want to use this MLA, they can turn it off. Uh, or, or they can also always turn it on later on again. I mean, right now they don't want to use it, two months down the line, they would like to use it. They can go ahead and turn it on. That is possible. So, so variety of such customizability uh, in this feature exists. Uh, we use, uh, we also provide a long-term storage uh, for all these matrix data and the logs data, which is very important from the perspective of uh, having this data accessible for a longer duration for any uh, lingering issues, the issues which are uh, difficult to, uh, triangulate, et cetera. So we use uh, blob storage in order to store data for longer term without costing a lot of money to you. Uh, and then uh, the data is available for longer term for better analysis and resolution of the uh, difficult uh, issues in your cluster. So from a, uh, from a support perspective, this is a very important feature that, you know, this user cluster MLA already provides long term storage. You can configure how long it's up to you. Uh, there are some defaults uh, already out there, but if you can customize those defaults about the term, how much time you want to store the metrics data and how long do you want to store the logging data separately. And in order to get the user cluster MLA installed, you just need to do a one-time central setup on the seeds uh, of the KKP. Uh, those, those who have already used KKP, you will probably know that uh, KKP allows you to have multiple seed clusters uh, who are usually responsible for uh, one region at a time, et cetera. So you will have to do this uh, setup on each seed and then user clusters from that seed will be able to use uh, MLA uh, automatically. Then, then there is no extra configuration that is required. Okay, so with those uh, features, I would like to explain you how this multi-tenant architecture of user cluster MLA has been designed. Uh, so as you can see, I have a seed cluster here, the Kubernetes seed cluster here, and there can be many such seeds. And uh, these are the user clusters, user cluster one and two, which are associated with this seed, okay? So in such case, the way MLA stack, user cluster MLA stack has been uh, deployed is that we have a MLA, we will get an MLA namespace in the seed cluster, where a single instance of Grafana will run. There is no Grafana in the user clusters. Uh, another single instances of Cortex, Minio, and Loki uh, will run. Cortex is the uh, storage backend for Prometheus, which will hold the long-term data for the uh, metrics. I mean, the actual data is getting stored in Minio, uh, but you, uh, Cortex is the backend which will store it eventually in the Minio. Similarly, Loki distributed, 
is uh, is a logging component which is keeping track of all the log files and the actual data is again getting stored in the menu by loop and in order for each and every user cluster to reach this centralized setup we uh, in in each user cluster's namespace we will install a new component called gateway which is simply a reverse proxy and uh, each and every user cluster will then be able to individually configure whether they want to uh, uh, capture the metrics and capture the logs or not they can individually turn or on or off the monitoring and logging feature uh, and th then th that data will be sent over to MLA gateway and then to Cortex or Loki. Similarly, from second user cluster and and there on. So that that's how the multi tenancy uh, is achieved and also optimization of the resources because in each of the user cluster we are only running uh, Prometheus and Loki to capture the metrics and the logs. I, I mean to say not Loki but rather Promptel. Promptel is the component which is uh, capturing the logs, not Loki. Loki is here, which is um, uh, aggregating all the data. So uh, how do we go about doing this setup really? So we are also going to share this presentation with you where you can have these links, but I also wanted to send these links in the chat window right now for you. So I'm going to quickly grab them uh, and put it in the chat for all of you. So here is the URL that I'm going to show you right now as well. This is where you have the installation guide for user cluster MLA, how you can do the install on the uh, of the user cluster MLA. Um, so yeah, so how, how do we go about installing user cluster MLA in a existing KKP installation, right? Uh, so here are some uh, requirements that are given. Uh, in order to have the user cluster MLA stack installed, we will need an additional uh, two vCPU and, and 14 GB of RAM in your seed cluster, and then some storage requirement in order to store the data. Again, this, this data is dependent on how many user clusters you have and how many number of days you want to store metrics data, how many number of days you want to store logs data, how many metrics are you capturing in each user cluster, et cetera. But these are, uh, some of the uh, standardized um, typical requirements we have given, but you can get started with these uh, requirements and then adjust as per your real world um, requirements uh, for the storage. Essentially. So in order to install the MLA stack in the seed cluster, we first need to create some secrets which will be used by the rest of the MLA stack. And we use Helm to do that. So essentially we run this command uh, well, in order to run this command, you need the MLA repository, uh, which is a public repository under Kubernetes. And here you have variety of charts. You can see that there are a bunch of charts, but we are right now only talking about this MLA secret chart here. Yeah. So we are using Helm to install the MLA secret chart in a namespace MLA. And once the chart is installed, the MLA chart uh, is installed. They, we have given a convenient script to install all the other charts. We wanted to do this first uh, and, and we, we don't want to, you can run this deploy seed part n number of times, but you don't want to run this uh, every time because the secrets, if you regenerate, then, then other components may uh, run into problem. That's why we have separated out the MLA secret installation separately, which you just do one time and feel free to run this deploy CDSH any number of times. Whenever you change the default settings, just run this again and, and get your settings uh, reflected back. All right. I mean, this is just a, a simplification to install bunch of charts, okay? Um, with charts, these are the charts that will get installed. Cortex, Grafana, Loki, Minio, Minio Lifecycle Manager and Alert Manager Fox. These are the charts that will get installed in MLA, in MLA namespace in uh, your seed, all right? And so this takes uh, about 10, 15 minutes. So I already have a cluster ready where all these uh, components are already installed. The seed is essentially ready for me. I am not actually going to do the installation of the MLA stack in my seed, 
but i'm all, i'm definitely going to show you how to turn on and turn off the uh, user cluster mla on a given user cluster and how to use it and how to see things etc yeah so after you have uh, done the stack installation there is one more chart that we need to install which is uh, which which in kkp world uh, those who have experience to kkp would know as iap chart or identity aware proxy which allows essentially you to bind yourself into the main kkp authentication uh, component which is dex right and you can plug plug in something else instead of dex that's fine too uh, so for that we need to um, create some of the files and customize uh, some of the files so as you can see um, in order for uh, and that's why this file has to be manually prepared and you cannot include uh, that component installation in deploy seed.sh because you must first create this file and a, a sample file is already provided in the configuration um, probably i will show you this file quickly in order to explain what we need to make changes to so here as you can see value.example yaml was already present and maybe i compare it to show you the differences between the two so you can see here you know this is example i have rather used my own dex url from kkp installation and i have in added the secrets which you which can be any random characters essentially and then i have also removed this github organization because it did not make sense for my this um and i have also right as it was mentioned here that seed cluster kkp example.com so my seed cluster name is kubernetes so and then user mla dot lab dot kubernetes io is my uh, top level domain or the main domain so that is the prefix uh, rather suffix and the prefix is whatever you want to give so i have given grafana user this could be anything this will be the end point where your centralized grafana instance will be accessible available for the uh, user cluster users to to have a look at the variety of dashboards similarly for alert manager we again generate some random components here i mean random keys here and we also customize again the host name uh, which i have used alert manager user and then kubernetes all of that rest of the part remain same as grafana i think okay so that's why this file must be hand coded and after that and that is all is uh, you know explained here how to create etc etc instead of that i just thought i will show you a real file difference to make it easier to understand but yes you can feel free to read through this and understand it here is a um, once we have done this file change you also need to add these secrets that we have added the client secrets here into the main kkp values yaml and uh, i am going to show you that here my my values dot yaml is encrypted so i must show it to you from here uh, just give me a moment so i'm going to take values dot yaml so as you can see here in the dex area clients i added the couple of new clients uh, the mla grafana and mla alert manager and the keys that i have used here the secret keys are same as the keys that you see here mkvr and zxfi zxfi and kvr okay and the and the redirect uri are also same as what you see uh, in the other file so this is very important in order for the mla stack to get to work so whatever host name you give here and whatever client secret you give here are also referred in this values.yaml i mean i i open this values.yaml from here but you will not be able to see because everything is encrypted yeah uh, and that's why i just in you know uh, showed you why a decrypted file um so that once our files are ready essentially the iap file and the dex file then you need to install the iap chart uh, yeah one thing is iap chart is not part of the mla repository purposefully so you will not find a iap chart here because iap chart is already part of uh, kubernetes so it will so you can already just you know refer it from 
Kubernetes and use it in order to install the IAP uh, chart here. And, and there is a link about how to use IAP in KKP in general. You can read more about the IAP, how it works, et cetera, in KKP, right? All right, so with that, our all our charts are installed. And if you, um, okay, I'm just switching the namespace here to MLA, and I'm asking Helm to list the variety of charts. So you can see all the charts are installed, including this IAP chart that I was uh, just now explaining about, right? So once the installation part is out of the way, we need to turn on the MLA feature in our existing uh, seed. For this, we first of all, turn it on centrally in the Kubernetes itself. Uh, since this is a still a very new feature, we call it in alpha stage, so we must enable it as a feature gate. Once it stabilizes, probably in 2.20, we will remove the requirement of turning it on via feature gate. But right now, you must use the Kubernetes configuration file to add this block under feature gates that enable true. And then for whichever seeds you want to turn on the MLA stack, user cluster MLA stack, in each of the seed file, we need to add this block, MLA user cluster MLA enabled. So for example, if we see the files here, Kubernetes configuration, you can see that I have feature gate user cluster MLA enabled true. And for the seeds, uh, blocks, master, you can see here I have added the MLA user cluster MLA enabled true. So this also gives you an opportunity to turn off the user cluster MLA at the seed level if you want. So you can just turn it off and the user cluster MLA feature will be disabled from that seed and all the user clusters on that seed will not have access to user cluster MLA. All right. So that's it from the uh, code side. So you basically apply these files. So you have reapply the seed, you reapply the Kubernetes configuration in your um, KKP installation and you are ready to use the KKP now. So in order to use that, I want to move this particular uh, out a little bit. Okay, it is not going, so I will just use it this way. All right. So if you go to Kubernetes platform and if you are admin, you you should be able to now see additional new things in the admin panel. So I went to admin panel here, and in the admin panel you can see one, two, three, and four new additional things that are available. Uh, important. This feature is available in version 2.18 only. So if you're using older version of KKP, then you will need to first upgrade yourself to 2.18 in order to use user cluster MLA feature. But now that this is 2.18 and um, I have this, so what are the options that I already have here? So you can just say that I'm going to do this in fact now, um, enabled by default. So user cluster logging, Whenever any new user cluster is created, it will already have the user cluster logging enabled by default. And if you say enforce, then it will also be, the, 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 the option will not be uncheckable whenever new user cluster gets created. So you can also enforce it, or you can just say, okay, it is available, so you don't have to check it, yeah, that way. So I will purposefully, I will not check one, uh, and I'll keep one check so that you will see. Also, these two parameters are important that we must configure them, these are same, suffixes or prefixes, I mean, that we had configured in our files earlier, the IAP file and the values file, right? In the dex, just a second. Sorry, I am MLA config, I am values, yeah, sorry, values. So Grafana user, whatever is the prefix that you added here to your seed, that is the same prefix you want to configure here. That way, um, the end users will get a direct button in order to open these uh, pages in their user cluster. And you will see how that happens in, in a minute. Yeah? Once we are through with the configuration. So this is one of the configuration that we can do. And that's, Pretty much it. There is add-ons configuration that I will talk about in the 
when we create this turn on the user cluster MLA. But yeah, if effectively, in order to get some good metrics out of the box for your user clusters, we recommend that you turn on the node exporter add-on and kubestate matrix add-on uh, so that your data about all your worker nodes is already exposed and uh, those metrics are getting captured. And similarly, data about your Kubernetes as a cluster uh, is also getting captured and uh, is available. So these two add-ons are highly recommended. If you, you, if you do not uh, turn these add-ons on, then some of the out-of-the-box uh, dashboards will not show any data because they depend on the metrics that are sure, shared by this, okay? So, so that's pretty much what I wanted to cover as part of the uh, one-time setup. So I walked you through this page and essentially these are the commits where you will be able to see the same diff that I showed you in the VS code and the admin page setting also we saw already, right? So we are ready to actually experience the user cluster MLA now in a real actual cluster. So what that's what we are going to do now. We are going to first thing we are going to do is we are going to enable the MLA on the fresh user cluster. Um, so here is my KKP platform and here is my project. And just so I don't run into weird issues about, you know, cluster not getting ready. I have kept a cluster ready, but the cluster does not have user cluster monitoring and user cluster logging on right now. You can see that they are not on, but otherwise the cluster is running and working fine. And let's check the add-ons. I have not installed any add-ons so far. So I'm going to turn, edit this cluster first of all. Yeah. And I'm going to say, okay, I want to turn on the user cluster logging and user cluster monitoring. Okay. And I need to save changes. Okay. And now user cluster monitoring and user cluster logging is turned on. And you can see that because of that, I have got a new fresh tab here and where I can, uh, you know, see some of these things, but for that, I think it is still uh, doing the actual install, even though it shows um, these are turned on, the actual user controller manager must restart in order to uh, reflect these changes, so which is going on right now. And once it is done, we will be able to see those pages below. All right, so we can also monitor this cluster from here, which is the cluster name, CVQ. This is just a lens. Uh, okay, I think it is, it is still running. Okay, it is done, right? So user cluster uh, controller is also now running, pool is back. So as, as uh, it was suggested to install add-ons, let us also install the node exporter add-on. It is okay to not do the continuous reconcile. You, if you do, that is also okay. And cube state matrix add-on. So that we get some information about the node data and the Kubernetes cluster data, um, yeah. So this is, this is essentially it. Uh, our cluster is now reporting the matrix data to our centralized component. And let us go and have a look at it. So when you go to logging, monitoring, logging, alerting page now, <coughs> you can see certain uh, options to configure the alert manager because you want to configure what things you should get alerted for, right? Otherwise, alert manager cannot really do. So you need to give some rules here, which we will give. And you can already open Grafana and alert manager UI. So I'm opening Grafana here for you. Um, and it's coming here. And as you can see here, um, there are bunch of, uh, uh, bunch of dashboards which are already present namely Kubernetes overview dashboard, nodes dashboard, this dashboard I added, and so ignore that. Nodes dashboard, nodes overview, pods and stateful set. So Kubernetes overview dashboard uh, is essentially showing you, and, and we are aware that there is some issue with these top panels here, uh, and we are working on fixing it right now, but otherwise it gives you how much total memory is there, how much is disused and all of that. You can also see, 
the network data and pods data and all of container CPU usage, container memory usage and all of that. So all that data about your user cluster is already now available for you to visualize. And since I am the admin for this uh, cluster, I am also allowed to add new dashboards or customize or delete whatever I want to do, I am, I am allowed. But if you have a read privileged user in your cluster, you will be able to see it, but you will not be able to modify it. All right. And um, so I also wanted to show you how this user cluster MLA can be really beneficial for you. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some, uh, you know, some user workload. So I'm going to install some application and then I'm going to monitor that. And, you know, because it is my cluster, I am going to install some random uh, workload on it, which is fit for my use case. Somebody else will do it for their own differently. And so then I will have to be able to install dashboards which are relevant to my workloads, right? So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to go to test deploy folder. And here I have a uh, kube config of my user cluster that we are working with right now. So I'm going to do kube config webinar. Okay, get node, for example, see that I have two worker nodes here going on, right? Perfect. So, and I have a simple, um, very small deployment here, uh, Liz, and I'm going to apply that deployment, which creates a small project and a service service of type load balancer. So I get uh, a load balancer for it in a minute. Okay, so I'm I'm still waiting for, okay, it is already there in fact for me. This is the load balancer that I have, um, but it might not be accessible just yet. So I will try to uh, hit it a couple of times. to see whether it is accessible for me. See right now, uh, because it takes about a minute or so before this host name starts to resolve from the Amazon side, even though the load balancer is provisioned, right now it is not able to reach it. So we will give it a, a minute or so. Until then, what I will do is I will remove the dashboard that I had installed and I will reinstall that dashboard for you just to show you how you can go ahead and install. So you can go to import and you can ask for the dashboard ID from Grafana. I, I have literally taken a ready-made out of the box dashboard from grafana.com, which monitors Node.js projects. And I load it. I give him Prometheus data. You can see that uh it is i'm sorry i need to do a quick switch uh yeah so that was another thing that i wanted to also cover for you that it's a multi-tenant architecture so right now when i logged in i had already logged in into a different project akp project but i have access to these three projects so these three projects are visible if you your user has access to only one of the project when i say project uh where is my kkp these are the projects, okay? So if you have access only to user MLA demo project, then you will only be able to see that one. Then you, do, you will not even have an option to switch. Okay, but I'm now switching to user MLA webinar project here. And uh, as you can see here, here I don't even have that particular uh, uh, dashboard installed. So I am installing that dashboard now here, load. And now I'm getting a Prometheus of my cluster, specifically webinar cluster, and I'm importing it. And I have the dashboard now here. In the meanwhile, let's see whether the DNS resolution has worked now. So uh, you can see it's a very simple web page. Um, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this web page and I'm going to put some load on it. Okay, it's a very simple web page. All right, and right now you can see this Node.js dashboard is saying that it has no requests so far. In fact, it, it has two requests now and it will show those requests also here in a minute. Uh, let me also put it to five minutes, last five minutes, it let it show the data. And now uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do 
I'm going to use a load testing tool called AB or Apache Workbench. And um, what I'm telling the Apache Workbench is that please hit this website 6,000 times. And at a time you hit it with 200 parallel connections, okay? And uh, okay, sorry. this is my URL 3000 slash, okay? And Apache Bench is now hitting this URL 6,000 times in a batch of 200 at a time. It will it will start showing some of the, uh, I mean, it is preparing first. It takes a bit of minutes there. And then it will start throwing you output here. And you can see that um, in the Node.js process data, et cetera, you can already see some requests getting picked up here. And slowly, yeah, in the express route, you will be able to start seeing bunch of requests going up, 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 and they will go on. As you can see, it has completed 600 requests here. Uh, and of course, the user MLA is a bit uh, slow to catch up, but in a few seconds, it will do a catch up. And it is showing me all kinds of data. So here is an example of, I had a Node.js based workload. So I was able to deploy my own uh, dashboard and start monitoring it. Not only that, I will also be able to turn on my own alerting configuration so that I get alerted whenever some special problem with this Node.js application uh, happens, all right? And, and that's the key thing that we wanted to give anyway in the uh, user cluster MLA that we wanted to uh, optimize the setup yet keep the most important flexibility that is uh, available, uh, still available to the end user administrators. Uh, user cluster administrators. So that is what is going on here. We have about 2000 requests now and we are still hitting it. Uh, so in the meanwhile, while this is happening, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to quickly go back to my demo. I enabled the MLAs on the user cluster, I added the add-ons. I will show you the impact of these add-ons also uh, for you quickly. So because I have added the add-ons, my nodes dashboard will be able to show you the data about the nodes and how the workload is on each of the nodes. So here is one node and here's the other node. These are the two nodes that I have in my cluster, how it is going, CPU utilization, memory utilization, et cetera. Uh, you can also see the data about pods at the pod level. So last five minutes again because i have to turn it on to five minutes because i just turned it on but yeah it is capturing things for us essentially uh so that is about a uh, variety of built-in dashboards that we already have and uh, so we deployed some demo workload and the dummy load is basically being put up we ran some 4,000 is request and then maybe because of some error, we got blocked most likely because we hit it too many times. That's what I at least understand from the error here. Uh, but now you can see on the Node.js dashboard that we have 4,000 plus requests here. And um, yeah, you can also probably see already in the express routes, the requests have tapered off, right? So there was a peak of the request and then it has tapered off already. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so then I also wanted to show you the logging demo and the alert manager demo. Uh, demo. For that, I would do the alert manager configuration now because it takes few minutes for it to get picked up. So for that, I have a file here in my repo. Uh, here I have the configuration for the alert manager already present. So what I'm doing is I'm creating two alerts, message app down, the app that I just deployed is a message app and a fake app down. There is no fake app basically in, in the application. So, so this will obviously already be up and this will not be up essentially. Those are the two rules that I am going to add uh, to demonstrate the uh, usage of the alerting config. I'm going to my cluster webinar. I am going down to the monitoring, logging and alerting tab of my cluster. And in the alert manager config, I'm editing it. And I'm sorry, not here. Uh, I'm going to add a rule group. 
if you want to customize like where should these alerts be sent to and such kind of things you want to customize the upper part which i had earlier opened a pop up for here i am only adding the alert uh, uh, rule group so i did this you can add multiple uh, rule groups as per your requirement so i have added this and i am now opening the alert manager ui as well and as you can see right now there are no alerts yeah that's why i said that it takes a couple of minutes for the alert manager to decide that yes it is really down because there is a threshold after which it will show things in alerts here okay so in the meanwhile i'll show you the logging demo uh logging demo you can see via grafana again basically grafana acts as a centralized uh, ui to do dashboarding metric observation and all of that and as well as also to do log exploration so there is no separate ui for uh, logging uh, part of the story so <clears throat> so you can go to explore and in the explore you can see that there are uh, multiple uh, the data data sources uh that you can select right now in the given project i only have one user cluster which has uh mla enabled so that's why i'm getting only two of them but if i add more user clusters in this project then you will get many more such lokis and prometheus as listed here so loki is what we want to use in order to see the data uh the the logs so you can see here that there are a bunch of apps uh that are all i mean these are only the labels you can for example you can pick the node exporter as the label and show logs it will show you logs of the node exporter um and these are all the node exporter so there are uh, two node exporters that are running actually uh, because of the two machines because node exporter runs as a daemon set uh, so there are two nodes so these are the combined logs of both of them but there should be some so you can see this is coming from 23.19 and this is also 23.19 but this is coming from 25.210 right so this is an aggregated log uh, information and often times it is useful to actually aggregate logs of all your pods together instead of checking each and every pods data together right so the message label zero app is the uh, label that i have given to my app the one which i installed for node js and um, you can see that i have a bunch of and i have purposefully added some errors in that application uh, randomly sometimes it will log these errors so so you can see you can quickly filter on all the errors or you can filter on all the non errors so these are all the info logs for actual hits that happen and and that's that's how you can basically go on checking variety of all the pod logs for your application uh, user cluster are basically available here to proxy for example or prometheus itself promtel all of it all right so that that's what you can do using the the loki and also there is a way to filter the logs to only show error maybe yeah uh, so it will only show me logs with the um let me just remove the proxy show logs ah okay so there is a proper syntax for it in the uh, logql file uh, logql website where you can actually see this maybe i am not giving the right content here i that's why it is not returning any information for me right now okay so that is about the logging demo and hmm. okay last 15 minutes right yeah because already 5 minutes ago so all the in the last 5 minutes there are no logs basically that's why it was not giving any data for me yeah so if i do this this is also another way to capture the the the, the lines which match your interested text basically right so that's the logging demo and i hope by now the alert manager would have detected that the pay cap is down so it has already started showing me that alert and if i turn off my message app then after a while it will also let me do that yeah okay get uh, deploy okay okay delete deploy message app okay so i have deleted my app so alert manager should detect that this app is also indeed down 
uh, it it might take few uh, one or two minutes though until then i will try to move past and and pretty much i am done uh, if you have any i welcome you to install the user cluster mla and you feel free to reach out to me to face issues and thanks for joining um i hope this session was uh, informative and interesting for you and maybe for some of you um yeah maybe uh, you tasted some blood now and want to play with this uh, multi-user cluster mla by yourself um here's a little hint from our side so if you want to exploit this uh, feature and many other powerful features that we provide um, in KKP. You can try our brand new magical tool, um, Start Kubernetes, which uh, helps you bootstrap your GitOps uh, tool chain um, within just a few minutes. So you can easily and instantly kickstart your Kubernetes project. Um, if you want to try it out, um, here's the link. Uh, you can find it on the slides. Please leave us your feedback, your comments, your thoughts on it. Um, if there's anything you think we should improve or change, we are happy to uh, receive your feedback so that we can improve and um, yeah, make it as user-friendly as possible. Um, you'll find our social media channels to reach out to us. And uh, yeah, with that, thank you very much for joining and um, hopefully see you next time soon.